Seven, eight. Who do we appreciate? I am so ADD, it's unbelievable. Good morning. How we doing this morning? Um, it's Friday for everybody who that matters to. Remember a time in my life it did not matter. <laughs> this would actually have been Tuesday. <laughs> Worked uh, retail for a number of years. Um, and I had set days off, but they were Tuesdays and Wednesdays, which meant uh, Friday was Tuesday. Wednesday, uh, Saturday was Wednesday. You get the idea. I was so turned around all the time. It was, it was crazy. Uh, parts of that life, I, I enjoyed most of it. Schedule-wise, I did not, and that's okay. It's not for everybody. Retail is retail. Um, I just praise God this morning. It's a good day. Uh, it's a wonderful day. It's Friday. Um, I am still trusting God for some rain. Uh, we need rain. I'm not a, I'm not a climatologist or nothing like that. But I know, I know when we need rain, and we need rain. So we're just praying for rain for the farmers and the people who have gardens and etc. 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 We we just need rain. So it is what it is. So. Um, you may see on the title of this, Great Scott. I don't know, I just give it as I, I, give it as I get it. And um, uh, so, I, I don't know how many of you know, I, again, my name is Doug. Um, I, I am a, a member, whatever that means exactly. I'm committed to a, a small body, a small work of Christ here in town. It's actually in Chatham with a Glen Arm address. There you go. Uh, it's, Jesus is the gate. Uh, pastor Steve Miller, he's our senior pastor there. I love that man. Um, honor him, his wife, uh, for serving God the way they do. Um, but I've been there for about a year and a half, a little over that, pushing two years, and I believe October, I think. Uh, again, great little work. Um, worship is wonderful. I will do some shameless plugging here. Worship there is is top notch. Um, if you're looking for a home church, um, one that's laid back, one that's comfortable. Uh, the only dress code is is cover yourself in some form or fashion uh, and if you can't do that we'll help you a little bit <laughs> uh, we do communion every single week uh, which is very different with my background which is fine either way there's we're not going there um, but the Spirit of God moves but anyway uh, we had we have our midweek service on Thursdays and what we do um, I'm gonna do some more plugging here Alexis and Todd Williams uh, they kind of lead a book study we do on Thursday nights um, I get there at 5, 5.30, I think it starts at 6. Um, you can check the page out, Jesus is the Gate um, in Springfield, Illinois. You know, come up with that. But anyway, we do a book study. and um, The book study is great. Uh, it's wonderful. Great person wrote the book and so forth. Great in insight, prophetic insight, good teaching insight. But last night, uh, Michael uh, Baylog, I know I keep dropping names. I just like to make reference points. Um, Matt, Michael Baylog made a comment on my video from yesterday. And uh, we, we chatted and conversed about it. It was good. It was good. It was just a meaningful, loving, respectful discussion on the subject of healing and how God heals and and, and, and the promises of God in the Word. And... Uh, and I don't, I, we didn't, we didn't actually open the book at all last night. We just kept discussing. Um, and that's not just in the book. It's just, it was a very good, meaty word discussion. We discussed several, several pieces of the pie. And again, very good, very uh, great exchange of revelation and insight into what the word teaches and so forth. And the reason I'm bringing all this up, it, it, I was in a praying this morning and seeking God. I was like, all right, Lord, I, I need to stay consistent. I'm going to stay consistent. I'm enjoying doing this. Um, um, but I, it's like, where are we going from this? And it's Friday and, you know, whatever that means. So, And he just kind of led me to, um, to study for next week um, the different ways God heals the different modes of transportation, for the lack of a better way of saying it. Um, so, uh, I think I already sidetracked myself in case I hadn't introduced. Uh, again, my name is Doug. I'm with the Tent of Meeting um, IL for Illinois. And we are an evangelistic tent ministry that goes um, um, free of charge. We travel, uh, we mean 
myself, uh, Jeremiah Miller, uh, Michael Maylog, and and um, and Melissa. And Melissa, I don't know why I always forget your last name. I I'm getting older. I just don't pull things as easily. So I love Melissa. She's a sister of mine, and she's on the piano. But um, we go around. We preach the gospel. Um, we set up in uh, a park, um, and we preach the gospel. But um, and I'm. I'm covered under Steve Miller's ministry down in the, uh, that's my home church. So anyway, sorry, I, <laughs> the pill has not kicked in yet. Um, but anyway, I was sitting there praying and just like, wh where do we go from here? And because that was such a great discussion yesterday, I really enjoyed it. And um, and um, as I was seeking and I'm like, you know what, let's do that. Let's just tear into next week the different ways that God heals. And there are specifically different things that are mentioned in the Word in which how God does get this done. Um, I want to also dispel what I believe are some myths. Uh, again, only proven by Scripture. Um, not what I think, not what I feel. And I may even bring out some points where if I'm studying something, if I was like, well, I thought it was this way and it wasn't, I'm going to even bring that out. Because I think it's important to remember that not one of us has got the... Uh, has cornered the mark on any one doctrine or theology. So we have to use the word. And more importantly, the word says, humble yourself. And I want to stay that way. I want to stay humble to the point that God can use me. Um, I want to be so, so humble I can write the, the, the book of 10 Steps to Humbleness and how I got there in five. <laughs> so anyway, um, so... Um, the, the, the two scriptures that kind of uh, dropped in on me for this to kind of reinforce where I think I, I want to go is uh, there's two of them, um, two of them that came to mind, two of them that dropped in. Second Timothy 2.15, I've actually got that one bookmarked, I'm getting better at this, a little organization goes a long way. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 15, uh, Paul is talking to Timothy, this is a second letter and it's I, I believe it's said that this was his last letter, the last letter that Paul had written. It says, uh, Be diligent to present yourselves approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, comma, rightfully dividing the word of truth. I believe, um, and pick the subject, <laughs> it doesn't matter which one it is, there are so many people that I believe they get so hung up in studying the Logos word, just respectfully, just the written word, okay, that they don't pray that the Logos word by the Holy Spirit becomes a Rhema word, which Rhema means revelation. As I'm saying that, I'm dropping high fluting words, <laughs> so, but we, when we're reading and studying the word, which is the manual manual for how all this works when we read and study the word we have to understand what it's saying by the holy spirit uh kenneth hagan uh I, I heard so many times on his teachings you put your own thinking on it don't put your own thinking on it put the mind of christ thinking on it as i'm reading a scripture uh, uh, a very wise man i know uh he's my uncle gonna be heading to his church here in a little while to do a tent meeting Tom Williams, he said, uh, um, there's been many times I've agreed with him that he'd be reading along, studying, and so forth, and the Holy Spirit will show him a scripture. He said, there's something here. And I was like, well, what is it? He's like, well, you're not ready yet. I'm going to show you later, but I just want to let you know there's a nugget there that you need to pray out. And uh, and that's what it is. We, we, we read and we study scripture based on subject matter. I mean, what do you need in your life? Do you need a financial breakthrough? Do you need healing? Do you need a miracle? Do you need uh, lost ones in your in your life in your uh, in your family saved? Um, the, fill in the blank. We most of us are all in need of something. As we study Scripture pertaining to that subject matter, all the answers are in here. It's God breathed. It's God breathed. It's God ordained. Uh, as we are reading and studying, the Holy Spirit, moving from glory to glory, is going to unfold that truth and that revelation to us. It's always been there. It's just when our spirit man is able to receive that. 
that when our spirit man is able to receive that, kind of like when Jesus, Todd was talking about this last night, it was wonderful, when um, it, it, it's really interesting, um, and I didn't write these down, but it's kind of rolling through here, so I'll, I'll just bring it up. In Matthew, there's two different spots. I believe it's Matthew 11 and Matthew 13. Again, I didn't write this down, so we can check this out. Matthew 11, when Jesus gets into the boat, and he calms the waves. Um, I don't I actually now I can't remember if this is him calming the waves, or he just gets in the boat and the waves stop. There, there, it's a tempest. They think they're going to die. And many of the disciples, it didn't actually name one, it says, surely this is the Son of God. He does not comment on that. Later, as Jesus and the disciples are walking, he asks who people say he is. And many of them say Elijah and so forth. Then he says, who do you say I am? Peter answers and says, or Simon at that moment says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. There's a difference. There, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus responds to that one. So it's a revelation. It's a revelation that we have to get from the, from the Father, who is spirit. Jesus said, the Father, the Father is spirit. We worship him in spirit and truth, as John 4. Um, we have to get those revelations. We have to get that revelation from the word by the Holy Spirit. And, and I'm trying to stay focused here. But it's, it's as we rightfully divide the word of truth, that's when, the, that's when Holy Spirit is revealing what he's wanting to say to us. Um, now, last night we were talking about, and yesterday we were talking about how, um, you know, some people who, who don't receive healing. Okay, well, we're going to talk about that next week. The one thing I would, I, I want to comment on that. I'm not sure if I said this last night or not. And again, it was just a really great discussion. It really was. I loved it. Um, 1 Peter 3, 15 and 20, or 15 through 20, says... So 1 Peter 3, 15. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear, having a good conscience. When they defame you as evildoers, those who revile you, your good conduct in Christ may be shamed. For it is better, if it is the will of God, to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins. And here. I missed the part where it says, it, it, it was saying, I, I googled it right before I got in here. Always be ready to give a defense for what you believe. Um, I think actually, yeah, it was I'm sorry, verse 15 itself, forgive me. But sanctify the Lord God in your heart and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. So if we are walking through Walmart and we see someone who needs healed, we can obviously see they're walking with a cane, they're in a wheelchair, they're whatever the case is. It's visibly, visibly... You don't have to ask them. You can tell they are not walking with all their with all the capabilities. Okay, I'm just going to put it that way and leave it alone. If you feel led to pray for them, great. Follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. He's going to speak to you if you're willing to listen. When you lay hands on them, you deliver the word. I believe God wants to heal you today. Step out in faith. I mean, you should be a man, no, man, a woman of no reputation. God heals or not is actually not up to you since you're not the one that's doing the healing. It's up to him. If he has set that appointment up, you have, the only thing you have to do with it is one, your obedience to what he's telling you to do. If he's showing you how to do it, lay hands, speak a word. Just touch, whatever, it doesn't matter. Whatever that direction is. And faith. Your measure of faith. 
Now, when he spoke to you about healing, it wasn't necessarily based on their faith. It was based on your faith. That he's speaking to you to do that. Because you're trusting him to work through your life. Now, at the end, it's just like the seed, the parable of the sower. One plants, another one waters. God gives the increase. If God chooses to act, that's in his love. It's in his compassion. We, we are responsible for our part in it, not his part. I believe he wants to heal. I believe that. I mean, there's, there's nothing in the word that tells me he doesn't. The stripes on his back cost him a lot. So that wasn't in vain. So I am over time. And that's, <laughs> I had a feeling it might happen. So next week, I'm going to just spend some time. The different ways he heals. And there are multiple ways he does do that according to scripture. And I'm going to try to break those down in 15 minute bits. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, so I just want to quickly pray for you and just uh, be on the rest of our Friday. Um, so, Father, I just thank you right now in Jesus' name. I thank you for this mode of ministry. I thank you for this outlet. I thank you for everyone that hears this now, near future, long distance future. Um, I thank you, Father, that you move by your spirit even through this, even through delayed. I thank you, Father, that you want to heal, that you're reaching out to heal. In these last times, you want... It, this is a mode of confirming your word. This is how you confirm your word. This is one of the ways that you confirm your word. That the gospel should be preached, the gospel of the kingdom, to seek and to save the lost, to restore what the enemy has stolen. So, Father, healing touch. Father, begin working miracles. I set my faith in agreement to those who watch. Receive the goodness of God. Receive his goodness that by his stripes you are healed. You are healed. Receive it by faith as the faith of a child. You don't need to understand how it does it because you don't understand how the disease even got there to begin with. Same understanding. You don't need to understand it. Sometimes there's diseases that, God, that, that doctors don't understand. How they, how they happen. So we don't need to understand. We don't need to understand how healing virtue flows. We just need to believe and receive that it does. So we receive your goodness now, Father. And we just thank you for it. We thank you for touching every person right now listening to this recording. Let your love, let your presence touch them today, bless them, encourage them, lift oppression, and depression in Jesus wonderful name amen and amen till next week